These are some units of measurement I personally find arbitrarily defined or just inconvenient to use. I'm not trying to be culturally insensitive, I'm just trying to explain why I feel these units are not to my liking. Of course there are probably thousands of units of measurement that have been invented by now, but I'll just go over a small subset of them which I feel like talking about. The Fahrenheit. On Fahrenheit's original scale, the lower defining point was the lowest temperature to which its inventor could reproducibly cool brine, defining zero degrees, while the highest was that of the human core body temperature, defining 100 degrees. So why is this a stupid unit of measurement? Well, brine is a solution of salt in water, and it may refer to a salt solutions ranging from anywhere between 3 Point five to twenty six per cent. So it's really loosely defined. Also, the human core body temperature differs between individuals, so it's pretty arbitrary. Also, it's really inconvenient because it's not easily convertible to Kelvin's. A meter. Its definition was not grounded on universal constants until 1983, when it was accepted that the speed of light was constant. The meter, however, still retained its scale, so its definition is still pretty arbitrary to this day. It's uh, the length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum during a time interval of 1 uh, uh, divided by 2997924588 of a second. The United States uh, customary units and the imperial system units. Let's see here. For length, the units commonly used are 1 pica, which is uh, 12 points, 1 inch, which is, which is uh, 6 picas, 1 foot, which is 12 inches, 1 yard, which is 3 feet, one mile, which is 5,280 feet, and then there's the nautical mile, which is 1.151 miles. Do you see where I'm getting at here? I don't understand what kind of a madman must have invented such random multipliers between the different units of the same measurement system. Also, they were de defined by reference to the uh, prototype standards, but nowadays they are defined in relation to meters. Even in this definition, one foot is 0 0.3048 meters, which makes it really difficult to use. And those were just the units of length. When they are the units of area, the units of volume, the units of liquid volume, the units of dry volume, and the units of mass, each of which seem to use randomly chosen multiples for the different units. For the units of mass, I'll say that a pound is legally defined as exactly 0.4535923 kilograms, so it's not any better than the units of length of the imperial system. The units of time in the SI system. I mean, 60 seconds is f 1 minute, 60 minutes is 1 hour, 24 hours is 1 day, 365.25 days is one Julian year. I mean, those are almost as bad as the imperial systems units. The definition of a second is the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the casium-133 atom. It's a pretty complicated definition, don't you agree? I propose a system that is based on natural units. The origin of definition for natural units comes only from the properties of the fundamental physics, physical theories and not from interchangeable experimental parameters. I'm leaning towards uh, using the Planck units because there are a lot of universal constants that normalize to one in this system. The gravitational constant, the reduced Planck constant, the speed of light in a vacuum, the Coulomb constant and the Boltzmann constant. But that's just the opinion of someone who is not a physicist, so my proposal might not be the best possible one. 
Anyway, I'm thinking about this type of notation. 1p0 length is one Planck length. With the conventional scientific notation it would be written as 1 times 10 to the power of 0 Planck lengths. The capital letter P comes from the word Planck, so that there would be at least some way to distinguish between different natural unit scales. The notation we are using is identical to the E notation, which is another common style to write the scientific notation. The one in front can be omitted, but the zero after the capital P cannot be omitted to avoid confusion. There's a space between P0 and, and length so that it will be easier to read, but it's not wrong to omit it. 27 P0 lengths is 27 Planck lengths, 27 times 10 to the power of 0 Planck lengths. Here we have to write the number 27 because it's not equal to 1, which is the only case in which it can be omitted. Another way to write this is 2.7 p1 lengths, because every time we add 1 to the number after p, we divide the first number by 10. 1 p34 lengths is 1 to times 10 to the power of 34 blank lengths. A shorter form would be a p34 length. 1 p34 length is roughly equal to 16 centimeters, 0 0.16 meters, 6.36 inches or 0 0.53 feet. A P37 length is roughly equal to 162 meters or 0 0.162 kilometers or 530 feet or 177 yards or 0 0.1 miles and so on. The advantage of this notation is that there's no need to remember any of the prefixes kilo, deci, centi, nano, tera, etc. After you learn the notation, it's trivial to understand the scale which we are talking about in every situation. Here are some conversion conversions of traditional units to Planck lengths. Planck time. I don't think it's necessary to talk about the notation anymore. It's pretty much the same as with the Planck length, although length is uh, replaced with time. So here are some conversions. The Planck temperature might be a bit more difficult to use because it almost always has a negative number after P, so for day-to-day -day living I re recommend the Kelvin scale. Also there's the Planck charge and some derived units, but those were the basics. But here are some used other useful figures anyway.